So my name's Alan and I'm married to uh, Louise. We've been married for 20 years and we have two daughters, uh, Jessica, who's turning 17 and Annika, who's turning, who just turned 15, actually. I'd grown up a Catholic, uh, went to a Catholic church and had to go through all the traditions of Holy Communion and Confirmation. My mum said, as soon as you've done your Confirmation, if you don't want to go to church anymore, you don't have to. So, of course, I stopped. <laughs> It wasn't until I reached university at the age of about 21 that I really began to have that encounter with God. Growing up with that Catholic tradition, I had no connection with God. I knew all the facts, but there was no connection. It was just, I suppose, something in the mind, nothing in the heart. But when I um, got to university, I met some different people, um, people that actually cared about who I was rather than what I did, and that really struck me. Um, and I thought, you know, who are these people? Also, I was tutoring um, a student and he was a Christian and he was different as well. His family were different. They were very friendly, very caring. Um, and also, um, I was playing in a band and the bass player also had that sort of personality. All of them were different. There was something about them that was different. You know, they, they cared. Um, they you know, they listened, you know, and, and they seemed to have some sort of joy, some sort of peace in their lives, you know. It got me intrigued. So looking back on it now, I realised that God was actually, had his hand on me. Although, you know, I was successful uh, academically and having good time in the band and had lots of friends and all that sort of stuff, there was something missing in my life. And I could see that in, the friends that I encountered um, that were Christians. I didn't really have that peace or that, that joy, I suppose. I mean, I was happy, but deep down, you know, I didn't really have that, that peace. Um, you know, I was well aware that uh, we would die one day and that, you know, there is some sort of life after death, but I didn't really have that assurance that I'd be going to heaven. I knew there was a heaven, you know, from my Catholic upbringing, but I just wasn't wasn't sure if I was going. I realised that um, a huge thing that I was missing uh, in my life was a relationship with God. I mean, growing up a Catholic, you know everything in your head, you know, the rituals, but you don't have that connection. You don't have that heart connection. It's all up here, but it's not here. And I could see that with my friends that were Christians. They had that connection, that relationship. The friends at university kept uh, inviting me to church and this guy he was very persistent you know every couple of weeks you know he would invite me to church and I, I think you know I didn't brush him off because I really respected him and he was a kind uh, kind guy so I relented and I ended up going to the church and I thought I was a pretty good person, you know, I, I did all the right things, you know, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, um, I was polite, you know, I did, did study, I didn't break any laws. Um, so I thought, you know, things would be pretty cool going to church. So I went to church and, you know, it did strike me as being a little bit different. It was a bit of a culture shock for, for me, you know, coming from a Catholic background. But I went and, you know, I had a good friend with me. You know, it started getting, uh, the cogs turning in my mind started to get me thinking about, you know, what is this Christianity, I suppose. After months, um, I was invited to a, a Christian group at the university and I walked into this one particular um, tutorial room and on the board was this sign that said, God hates good people. And I thought, this is pretty confronting. I mean. You know, how dare they say something like that? You know, how dare they say that God hates good people? I'm a good person, does he hate me? As the talk unfolded, it became very clear that, you know, no one is good. You know, no one is good except for God alone. And um, <clears throat> I think, it's gonna make it emotional. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think it was a realization then to me that, you know, that, you know, I do need God. And no matter how successful you are, um, how academically gifted you are, <clears throat> you know, how rich or how poor you are, you know, we do need God. There was a, there was a bit of a talk about um, particular 
uh, passage in the Bible, and this particular verse was in um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9, and there it talked about you're saved by grace, not from what you've done, you know, not by any works, but it's a gift um, from God. And that just hit me like a lightning bolt through the eyes. And I'll never forget the day I was sitting at a table with two others who also um, had that realisation. And, you know, looking back on it now, it was really about God um, opening my eyes to the truth, you know, that, you know, through what he has done, you know, through um, grace that I can be saved. And, um, yeah, it was, <clears throat> it changed my life. It really changed my life. But as I've journeyed and encountered God more and more, you know, I've realised how far I am away from God's standard. You begin to understand very quickly that, you know, you are a person that's, that's full of um, rot. So I suppose as, as I grow older in my understanding of who I am, I get more and more appreciative of what God has done for me. And I suppose I can understand more and more what I'm actually saved from. So as I um, continue in my life, you know, I sort of continue to stumble, continue to fall, and continue to let God down, really. Um, but, you know, that doesn't stop me from following God. And I know that God, you know, still loves me. God loves his children, you know, and he wants to see us grow and become the people that he created us to be. And I really think that, you know, if I do fall and, and sin, that God, God is there to pick me up and to, to gently instruct me uh, to become, you know, the person that he wants me to be. And, you know, I'm never gonna lose uh, that um, certainty that I'll be with him forever. That has been, you know, guaranteed to me through, you know, Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection. I suppose God really wants us to come as we are, come as who we are, but he also doesn't want us to stay as we are. He wants us to change. He wants us to be more, more like him so that we can live our lives and live our lives to the full that he's promised us.